What makes a truck necessary? I'm not sure. This is that new segment of it trucks that segment. probably work for most people, but they're not really trucks. Yeah. Because it's car, SUV, unibody architecture, front wheel drive biased. Welcome to the Ford Maverick. And it's cute. This is the front wheel drive hybrid Ford Maverick. It is built on the same chassis as the Escape. Yes, the Escape, the Ford Bronco Sport, Lincoln mm -hmm. Corsair, and the two cars that we don't get. Uh, they're built in Europe, Fusion and Focus. Yep. So clearly, it's not a chassis designed for fun or driving. Or truck things. It's designed to extract the maximum sales dollars. Yes. That's what the platform is, is for. But let's throw all that out right now. Let's talk about, first of all, the Maverick name. Uh -huh. Ford has struggled for years as far as attaching this name that signifies you contrarian, savvy individual going against the grain for the sake of polarity <laughs> okay. just to show the world that you are an individual never really worked with those 70s nasty coupe shapes. It was actually two-door and a four-door in the 70s. Then they brought it back in Australia for a little bit, and then it was something in Europe, and then another one in Europe for a little bit in 05. And now we've got a vehicle mm -hmm. worthy of the Maverick name. Okay, all right. Because of its usefulness. Utefulness? Mm. Easy. I'm, Easy. We should stop the ute jokes. We really should stop the ute jokes. <laughs> great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. TV, web, and podcast. This is Everyday Driver. As you said, it's powered by a hybrid drivetrain. Mm -hmm. This is a, an eCVT that's been around in Ford's lineup for quite a while, since 05, 06, somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. They've refined it over the years. So what it is, is a hybrid engine combined with an electric motor and the battery pack is on the passenger side under the under the cabin here and it makes what 191 horsepower 155 pound feet of torque it yeah. is a 2.5 liter hybrid the key thing is miles per gallon it gets almost 40 most people are saying 37 miles to the gallon in this front wheel drive remember this is not an all-wheel drive truck this makes this a commuter truck a truck shape <laughs> in an a actual car people commute in trucks Yes, with yes, true. Throwing no, caution no, to the wind. No, I'm saying this is a commuter car with a truck yeah. shape. In fact, it's a car wearing a truck body. It's a truck suit. <laughs> it is. It's a car platform. Okay, so let's talk about MPG. We mm -hmm. were just on a pretty long road trip. Good enough to get a, a good overall calculation yeah. Yeah, yeah. for the car. So we've driven it on the freeway. We've driven it in town. 40 is the rating in town. And then yeah. Ford says yeah, yeah. 37 combined for highway driving. So right now, the car is calculating 33.8, mm -hmm. and that's a pretty good average for uphills down, we, you know, cruising at 85. We don't drive apologetically, and right. we drive at altitude. All of those exactly things right. kill that number. Most for cars sure. you're used to, whatever the miles per gallon is, up in our area, they are 5 to 10 lower when you get up to altitude. Right. Almost 34, Almost 34 is that's good. That's really genuinely good, good. Yeah. in a truck, in a useful vehicle. Yeah. I still, yeah, you're going to call this a truck? because it looks like a truck, mm -hmm. and it's built by the company that builds trucks, yes. the world's best-selling truck, uh -huh. but it really isn't. It is not a and truck. that's a good thing. Mm, okay. Second of all, the platform, and that is how it drives. Mm. And you're going to have to trade in all of the driving goodness that you wish for, for your <laughs> new lifestyle. Yeah, fair. You're exchanging one for the other, because this doesn't drive well, but nobody gets in a pickup truck and says, I really need this to handle well. You're not buying this to go corner carving. No. <laughs> you're going to be carving on skis or your boogie board yes, or it's your, other thing. It's your activity car. It's not the point. Yeah. Who knew sure. this is not fun. And the steering feel kind of snaps back. It's a little rubbery mm. on initial turn in, and then you just let go and it just wants to snap back to center. <laughs> okay. Is what it is, right? It's front wheel drive architecture. All Very all much day is. Long. You've got that weight over the front, you know, huge weight, and then that torsion beam rear axle holding mm -hmm. the back end, end up, but it doesn't ride like a truck. True. It steers True. like a tall car, and there's nothing here, but who cares? Yeah. The ride is great, and it makes it great for long distances, it, like we just yes, proved. Yes, it has the ability to do a road trip, to go out to the middle of nowhere. It has the ability yeah. to go get your Starbucks and drive you to the office. This is important. It has all of those things yes. that are just about usability in a daily sense because you don't need something that will haul the world. In this front-wheel drive form, you need it to only, haul the world? Not for you. Yeah, seriously. In this front-wheel drive version, it only tows 2,000 pounds. If you right. load this out, and this one's about twenty-five, twenty-seven thousand dollars $27,000. If you load this out, 
it gets almost to forty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and now the tow tow package and tow rating it'll do four thousand pounds worth of towing, and you can get a right. trailer brake and that kind of stuff. So while on one level you've got Ford who knows about towing and trucks, on another level four thousand pounds is not very much. This is not it's your not, tow yeah. vehicle at all. This is your I have a fun dirty activity car. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So there's. Well, three configurations. There's the hybrid drivetrain front-wheel drive. Yep. Then you can buy the two-liter turbo yep. front-wheel drive or the two-liter turbo all-wheel drive with the FX4 package. And that makes it a li- little bit more off-roady. Mm-hmm. But nobody's going to be lifting this and turning it into a rock crawler. <laughs> You're going to leave it like it is and tow your slightly longer camper trailer or a fishing boat. And that's about you're, as you're much as you're going to tow your jet skis, and you're going to put your wetsuits and stuff that are nasty yeah. in the back, and yeah. that's going to be your day. And you've completely maxed out the tow capacity. Now, I hope you don't play hypermiling with this thing, <laughs> because at some point, you will see instead of attack, you get this energy usage consumption meter. It's your brake coach. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> called the brake coach. You can, oh, there it is. Sixty uh, percent energy return. You can turn you, that off, by the way. You did not brake efficiently enough, Paul. The right. highest number I've seen while we've had this car, I got almost eighty. Did you? Yes. I <sighs> apparently know how to brake with green intentions. There's gold stars in here. You know somewhere. it. You better believe it, Gotta man. Find them. The brake coach. That's important. <laughs> so this gives you the signage here. It electric illuminates when it's just using electric power. Yep. And that might be nice to try to always feather the throttle to make sure we're always in electric mode and you can't. So Mm. just drive it normally, like a truck, accelerate normally. It's not fast, but it's not slow and it moves with most traffic just fine. 3,700 pounds, but that electric motor assist, it's the key thing about electrics. They've got so much torque instantly Mm -hmm. and that helps the car down low. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't lag off the line. It feels perfectly normal going with any kind of traffic you have as a situation because while the engine isn't very powerful, that electric motor really, really helps in all the launch kind of situations to just make it feel like it's got enough for what it is. It never amazes, but you never go, gosh, this is just lagging. Yeah. Except for the transmission. Well, there's that. Yeah. Now let's take a look at the styling. This was designed by truck people. Yes. And all of the signature characteristic lines on all of Ford's current lineups are found on the Maverick. Yeah. So therefore, it looks like a pickup truck, but it isn't. Mm. And the separation between cab and bed is what got Honda laughed off the planet, and that's why they redesigned the Ridgeline. Yeah. They came out with something brilliant that still looks kind of good. It's looked better over time, the original Ridgeline. Yeah. And then all the customers said, well, it's not a real truck. Here's Ford knowing they build real trucks Yes. and offering this knowing that it doesn't need to appeal to truck buyers and that is the entire new segment. So I find Mm -hmm. this entire styling exercise very well researched Mm. and executed by Ford. I think this is brilliant. They're going to sell millions of these. They're going to sell more than they can make. I agree. This is going to sell like crazy. So when you jump into the interior, this is where the magic happens. Is it? Ford could have put just a black or gray interior in here. True. And yes. made it cheap and kicked yes. it out the door, and people still would have bought it. Even though you're going to feel like you're sitting in your elementary school plastic molded lunch tray when you hop in because of all the mm-hmm. cubbies and bins everywhere. Yes. There is some surprise and delight. There's some orange trim that didn't need to be there. True. But it's interesting. Yeah. There's some patterning on this textured plastic here that didn't really need to be there. It's on the door, too. You're right, yeah. It's got little undulations, and it's got little shapes on it, yeah. The only thing it's going to prevent is if your kids ride on your walls at home, and they get in your car, and they want to ride on the walls of your car, it's going to prevent them. It's not the smoothest surface ever, even though you can wipe it down. That's good news. (laughs) It's kid-friendly, I guess? I don't know. (laughs) But look at the bins, the cubbies everywhere. I think this is for dipping sauce. You pour ketchup and mustard in here. But but we've got... Fry sauce mm, goes in there. We've got mystery cubbies, too. You do. Well, your phone gets set up right here. A special cubby. Yes, down it low, does. Mm-hmm. and it's angled upward at you, even though you shouldn't be looking at it. A uh, slot for your credit card. The door handle does not extend all the way back into the armrest because Ford wanted you to put an entire one liter water bottle right yep. in the door. And cubbies everywhere, but I like the texture breakup. And the color and materials don't feel as cheap as Ford knows they are. It's hard plastic stuff. You can tell this is the 
the cheap end of the lineup. You can absolutely tell that. There's no getting around the fact that this is a cheap car and cheap in car sure, interior. Sure. But it doesn't feel like it's some torture chamber. And that's the problem with a lot of cheap cars. You get in and you're just like, oh, I just, I'm just i being punished. You know what I mean? <laughs> you didn't buy our top you, model. You just, so I'm being punished. This doesn't feel like this. It just feels like we made it right. inexpensive, but we also made it usable and kind of friendly and interesting. The Cubbies thing is driving me a little nuts, though, because I feel like every one of these Cubbies was made for a specific thing. And we just don't know what those things are. Except for the, the one liter water bottle that they mentioned. <laughs> You've got to figure it out, and that's part of the fun. Ford was very specific in not just giving you big bins. I mean, they've got a lot of potential places for storage. Yeah. But a lot of them are a very specific shape. And things like the one to the right of the screen here mm -hmm. fits nothing. In the press materials, it shows AirPods, which are dwarfed by it because it's not AirPod shaped. So there's some cubbies in here which just like, it's a hole, it's just but I don't know space. for what. Yeah, all right. Well, there's exposed fasteners that would suggest a little bit of ruggedness. Yes. But the rest of the materials feel like this is the place to just throw your stuff. Yes. And you don't have to worry, mm -hmm. which is part of the charm of this thing. There's also this forward integrated tether system fits back here. It's a little slot fits. to oh. which you can attach a hook for your bag or purse or you know grocery bags or a cup holder. And Ford has suggested that they are going to reveal the geometry and make the geometry publicly available so mm. you can 3D print your own thing to hook <laughs> on the tether system. Great. Perfect. It fits. <laughs> <sighs> but Ford doing this amount of research, putting mm. the amount of textured materials, the yeah. breakup yeah. of surfaces, making all the shapes relatable, and the buttons just do one simple thing means they did a lot of research. Yes. And yes. it will appeal mm -hmm. to many people, and mm -hmm. it will look interesting and good and function for all of their buyers. You can get the Larry package and make mm -hmm. it all gussied you can make up it and a little yeah. bit more yeah. luxurious, but this is the XLT right in the middle of the range. Yeah. And what are we at, 27000 About 27000 because this has all of the package you can put on the mid-grade model, so it's right at 27000 while still being the hybrid front-wheel drive. Yeah. Right. There's no sunroof. You can get the sunroof, that yeah. kind of thing. It feels cheap, but it's not offensive cheap. I agree. It's I just agree. usable, inexpensive, and it's you just accept it. I'm fine yeah, with that. I see that. All right, I'm ready to drive. Ready to drive and yes. use the rotary dial down here? You know it. The that's, reused that's, rotary that's, dial? It's the goat mode in other things like yeah. the big Bronco, and here it's just the transmission. But we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> You notice the big headlights look a little bit like baby's eyes, like fresh to the world. Yeah, I'm a brand new big. truck. I have I'm just a taking mid size in the world. face and a full size set of eyes. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. That's why the proportions That's look so very strange. Good. That's very good. And you park this next to any other, well, SUV. Park it next to a Subaru Outback and it makes this look kind of small now. Yes. I mean, this is genuinely small compared to most things being made right now. And also, here, here's my biggest positive. It's not another cheap five-seat CUV. The yes. world is plagued with a million of those, and yep. any, any brand you would like and any variation you would like and slight variations of the variation exist. And with another trim level. Ford and also Hyundai with the Santa Cruz, yes. and they are creating an alternative. Now, I know Honda's done this with the Ridgeline for a while. The Ridgeline is excellent in all of the ways that Honda makes good, worthwhile products for but sure the ridgeline is not interesting and not it's interesting been to pushed more towards a truck yes so you think truck when you're shopping for it that has, you don't think truck here probably not because the key thing about this that i don't know that you realize already this is the cheapest vehicle ford offers right now if you go to ford looking for what's a cheap car mm. ford sells it's this that's they don't amazing. sell a cheap car anymore in the U.S. Their cheapest vehicle, starting on just starting price alone, this is under twenty grand, and the Escape, which this chair shares a chassis with, starts above this. This is reminiscent yes. of the days when trucks were cheap and simple. Yeah. This yeah. is an affordable, hybrid, good gas mileage, usable vehicle. It just happens to be truck shaped. And I, yeah. I, I think That's it's going to really sell to accurate. a ton of people yeah. that have never, ever thought about buying a truck. People that need normal truck things. It doesn't apply here. It just doesn't. The other thing is, this drives like an early Prius. It is front-wheel huh. drive. Yeah. yeah. It has old-school feeling hybrid system. When you get on the brakes, it, it whirs and kicks back and does weird things. It has a CVT that is terrible to work with because, yeah. not Ford, CVTs in general are bad. So I just, That's I can't get point. over the fact that this is, it's not worthwhile to drive.
But you know what? Neither is a Prius. But the Prius does its job very well. And this will do the commute job, but this will do the outdoorsy mm. job that a Prius won't, that your most ever hybrid hybrid That's just won't. it. You want the goodness and benefits of a Prius, but you need more capability. This could be used as a rideshare vehicle very easily. Yes. This can be great for high schoolers. It's great for anybody that just needs the tool for the job and leave the sports car driving over here. Yeah. Commute, does it all, get away on weekends, empty nesters. This will appeal in some form to pretty much everyone. If you just have, I have a dirty hobby that just gets things messy, or I have, you know, dogs that become <laughs> come back dirty filthy. hobbies. Uh, yeah, easy. What? Easy, easy. This is still a family show. <laughs> this is perfect because you've got that bed out back. It's got yeah. a liner in it. It's just usable. And again, it says Ford on the side. So you just think, yeah, it's it a truck. I'll just use it. I'll just throw it around. It'll be great. I'm so mixed on this because we as a show that likes to drive, this isn't fun to drive. No. But anytime I actually look at this for what were they building, why were they building, it's a home run. And Absolutely. it's so affordable. Yes. That's the key thing. This is going to be the entry-level Ford that people start buying as either the I only have a little bit of money or I have a new driver or I just need something to throw around. This is now what you're buying. Well, this has now become a standard. Yeah. Because everybody owns SUVs and CUVs and is looking around for what's next. Yeah, fair point. And it takes companies to tell the buying public what's next. It's never a focus group. Mm. It's never <laughs> people coming up with my idea vehicle because what you get at that point is you get the homer. The you Canyon focus Arrow. group enough people, you get the homer. Yeah. <laughs> so this, I think, will become a new industry standard because people love trucks. But if you need a truck, great, go get a pickup truck. But if you need a big one, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. attach it to the things that you need it for rather than just driving around in a huge lumbering thing. <laughs> just go to Starbucks at it. That's. That happens. That happens all the That's all of Texas. But this, it has a lighter feel. And Absolutely. Like yeah. Todd said, it doesn't drive well. We don't like how it drives. But I do appreciate the power delivery. Speaking of It's power not delivery. a lot of power through the electric motor. And you're going to hear the engine noise like crazy, like Big this. Big time, yes. But it delivers its power like an electric car. Yeah, and it's Because it feels of the ECBT. Totally. It doesn't deliver it like a normal transmission and just, you know, what we're all used to. It's just a constant surge and a constant drone. So it feels futuristic in that sense, oh, even though okay. the tech is old. It's, it's futuristic for 2005. It is. It's not 2022 absolutely. futuristic. And it, but it works. And it has full front-wheel drive feel. If you've driven an average yes. front-wheel drive car before, that the way it pulls on the wheel and the way it, it just isn't engaging because it's front-wheel drive, this is not some genius front-wheel drive. So it just feels like an average front-wheel drive sedan. But if you think about it, that's the chassis. It's an yes. average front-wheel yep. drive sedan chassis with early 2000s hybrid tech. All of it works that all of it can be done at a price, and it can look cool, and it can succeed in what it's supposed to do. Okay, all right, I see the victory here. Sure, I, sure. I don't think actually this makes sense at forty grand, fully loaded out. At that point, no. I think there's too many competitors that you can e either get more truck capability or more driving benefit. But at yes, yes. 25, 27, I go, okay, all right, you've got an entry-level car with some truck capability, good gas mileage, some decent thinking about the interior. Now, the back seat space is not huge. It's tight. Yep. But if you yep. need to take your friends, you can. Stuff folds down. And you got a truck bed out back. Decide on your new lifestyle first. Yes. Pick your activity. spec your new Maverick how you want to. Yes. And the good news is most kitchen tables are about 29 or 30 inches tall. That's okay. what we're used to. Sure. When you fold the tailgate down... It's about the same. It's right at 30 inches. It's your so it's mobile like table. lifting something right onto your kitchen table okay. makes it easy. This thing just fits your lifestyle. There you go. Well, pick your lifestyle first. Pick, you got to pick a lifestyle. Then, then you got to you know, go. What's your new hobby? Your new dirty hobby? Yep. Then get your Maverick. 